Hello and welcome to this lesson on bind an energy per nucleon, which is part of the nuclear physics topic in AQA A-level physics. So in today's lesson, we're going to try and explain why some nuclei are unstable. So if we've been successful and learned in today's lesson, we should be able to calculate the binding energy of a nuclear process. To find and describe the concept of binding energy and then link binding energy per nucleon to nuclear stability, which links into the following part of the AQA A-level physics specification. 3.8.1.6 mass and energy. So in a previous lesson, we defined the concept of binding energy in nuclear physics. So the combined mass of free nucleons is slightly larger than the combined mass of bound nucleons in a nucleus. Now we call this mass difference the mass deficit or mass defect. Now this occurs as the nucleons are more stable in a nucleus, so they contain less potential energy due to the strong interaction attracting those particles together because they're close to each other they're within the range of the strong interaction now this reduction in mass and therefore energy as the nucleons turn into a nucleus is called the mass defect now this mass defect can be converted into a potential energy value by using our equation delta e equals delta mc squared we can also convert it into a potential energy value in mev by using our equation delta e is equal to delta m times by 931.3 where our change in mass, our mass, de um, so our mass defect is measured in atomic mass units, or U. Now, this energy difference between the combined energy of the free nucleons and the bound nucleus can be emitted to the surroundings during the process of the formation of the nucleus. So, this energy difference between the combined energy of the free nucleons and the, com and the energy of the bound nucleus is called our binding energy. So, the binding energy is the work done to overcome the strong interaction of attraction between all nucleons in a nucleus. So the binding energy is the energy needed to separate all of the nucleons in a nucleus into its separate nucleons. So we're now going to consider why this is so important. So the calculation of nuclear binding energy led to physicists pondering its importance to nuclear stability. So when we consider like two nuclei, so let's consider the nucleus of uranium, the largest naturally occurring nucleus in the universe, and helium, which is the smallest nucleus in the universe, which contains neutrons. So we can say that the binding energy of a uranium nucleus is 1,000 1,801 MeV, whilst the binding energy of a helium nucleus is only 28 MeV. Now, it has been found that the larger nuclei, which have the greater number of nucleons, okay, you would have the larger binding energy. So why do larger nuclei have a greater binding energy? Well, we find this is the case because the larger the nucleus, the greater the strong force attraction needed to overcome, so therefore the greater the binding energy. In addition, just a larger nucleus means there's a greater amount of nucleons, so you'll need a greater amount of total energy needed to remove all of them. So this, in theory, should mean it would take more energy to separate the larger nuclei than the smaller nuclei as they've got a higher value of binding energy because the uranium will need a lot more energy to separate all of its nucleons compared to the helium. So this means that the larger the nucleus, the greater the stability effect of turning free nucleons into a bound nucleus. So in theory, it was pondered that this should therefore mean that the larger the nucleus of your element, the more stable the nucleus. However, it's found that larger nuclei tend to actually be more, more unstable because they tend to be alpha emitters, which goes against the theory of binding energy. So why do these larger nuclei tend to be unstable? Well, they tend to be unstable because the stability of a nucleus is not based on the binding energy, but rather the binding energy per nucleon, which is equal to the binding energy calculated divided by the number of nucleons in the nucleus. So it tells us how tightly bound each nucleon is to the nucleus on average. So the binding energy per nucleon is a much more accurate measurement of instability because nuclear decays tend to only cause a few nucleons, I mean a maximum of four, 
hole in alpha decay to be changed. So this means that the total energy to separate all nucleons is not actually an accurate measure of this particular process. So in a nuclear decay, the total nucleus is never separated. As a result, the binding energy does not have to be given okay, to, the, to the nucleus to actually make them decay. We can consider this example by thinking about throwing a stone down a well. Because if you throw a stone down a well, then the total amount of energy transferred depends on two things. Firstly, how deep the well is when you throw your stone down, and also how many stones you throw down in total. But whether actually an individual stone is likely to find its way out of the well again only depends on how deep the well is. It doesn't affect about how many other stones you've thrown down the well. This is the same idea with the nucleus, because the stability of a nucleus, i.e. whether it's going to fall to pieces or not, depends on the average binding energy per nucleus, which in this, in this, particular, in this um, example is a measure of how deep the well is, rather than the total binding energy, which is a measure of how much energy is transferred by dropping everything in it. So, unlike real wells though, the potential energy well of a nucleus changes its depth depending on how big the nucleus is. So, as you make a nucleus bigger from scratch, it does get deeper quite rapidly, and then after about 56 nucleons, it gets gradually shallower the more that you add. So, the binding energy per nucleon is the average work done required to move one nucleon from the nucleus. So, it's the amount of energy on average needed to be given to a nucleon as a potential as potential energy to overcome the strong force attraction. So the greater the average binding energy per nucleon of a nucleus, the more work needed to be done on average to remove just one nucleon from the nucleus, so therefore the more stable the nuclear nucleus is. So in a nuclear process, it is in fact the change in binding energy per nucleon which determines whether a process happens. So the greater the change in binding energy per nucleon, the greater the stability effect of the process, the more likely it is to happen. So let's just look at an example where we can see how to calculate the binding energy per nucleon. So what is the binding energy per nucleon of a 56 iron nucleus which has a mass of 55.92067U? So the first thing you've got to do in this particular type of question is find the mass defect, which is the mass difference by doing your uh, mass of your individual protons and neutrons. Remember you are given the proton and neutron mass in the back of the equation book and then you would subtract that from the mass of the nucleus in total. So we've done 26 times by 1.00728, which is, if you look on here, going to be the number of protons, which you know that because you can work out how many protons are in iron, plus 30 times by 1.00867, which is the number of neutrons, which is 56 minus the number of protons, minus 55.92067, which is the mass of our nucleus in total. We can then find the binding energy, and again, remember that shortcut we talked about at the start of the video. You can multiply your mass difference in U by 931.3 to get into MeV, so we get 492.39 MeV. Then the third step is to divide this number by the number of nucleons. There's 56 protons and neutrons in iron. You divide at that total by 56, and you get 8.7927 MeV. Now again, please remember, the higher the binding energy per nucleon, the more stable the nucleus is. Now, the change in binding energy per nucleon in a nuclear process determines if it occurs in nature. Now, we can demonstrate this effect when we graph binding energy per nucleon against mass number. So, this graph will show us which elements are the most stable in the universe. Now, on this particular graph, the y axis shows the binding energy per nucleon, how tightly bound our nucleus is, whilst the x axis shows the mass number, the number of nucleons in the nucleus. Now, please remember, the higher the binding energy per nucleon, the more stable the nucleus is. Now, you'll notice straight away that iron is the most stable nucleus because it has the highest binding energy per nucleon. It's at the peak of the graph. So we can say that iron is the most stable nucleus because it requires the most energy to remove a nucleon from the nucleus. So we can actually determine what's our most stable nuclei in the universe by using this particular graph. Now, 
we can also remember that iron by definition is the most tightly bound nucleus it's the most stable nucleus because it requires the most energy to remove a nucleon from the nucleus now it's the aim of all elements to be as stable as possible to basically increase their binding energy per nucleon to that of iron now again remember that when the average binding energy per nucleon increases energy is released in this nuclear process and the change in the bind energy gives you the total energy released in the nuclear process so the average binding energy per nucleon can be used to estimate the energy released in different nuclear reactions so for nuclei which are smaller than iron when they fuse okay the binding energy per nucleon increases and they become more stable so remember again the higher the bind energy per nucleon the less energetic the nucleons are in the nucleus the more stable nucleus is so energy will be given out in this process and that's why energy is given out through nuclear fusion now for nuclei larger than iron when they fission the binding energy per nucleus in the nucleon increases so they become more stable so again remember the higher the binding energy per nucleon the less energetic the particles are in the nucleus the more stable they are so this energy can then be released in the nuclear fission process so from looking at this graph we can see straight away that there's two major areas of isotopes isotopes which carry out fusion which is all the isotopes before iron the peak of this graph in our particular periodic table whilst the isotopes carry out fission which are those ones which um, are above iron in the periodic table as you'll see below the below the peak of iron in this graph so isotopes lower than iron will fuse as this increases the binding energy per nucleon of an isotope whilst isotopes higher than iron will fission as again this increases the average binding energy per nucleon of the isotope so you'll notice that the average binding energy per nucleon increases gently for heavier nuclei those isotopes beyond iron whilst the average binding energy per nucleon increases rapidly for those lighter nuclei carrying out nuclear fusion so what this means is that the process of fusion increases the binding energy per nucleon of the isotope at a higher rate than fission does. So this means that nuclear fusion increases the nuclear stability much more easily than nuclear fission, which fundamentally means that the nuclear fusion process releases more energy per kilogram than the nuclear fission one. So what can we summarise from today's lesson? Firstly, we can carry out simple calculations from nuclear masses of energy released in the nuclear fission and nuclear fusion reactions. We can look at a graph of average binding energy per nucleon against nucleon number, and you should be expected to identify on the plot the regions where nuclei will release energy when undergoing fission and when they release energy when undergoing fusion. So if we've been successful and learnt in today's lesson, we should be able to calculate the binding energy of a nuclear process we can define and describe the concept of binding energy and finally we can link the binding energy per nucleon to nuclear stability so thank you very much for watching this lesson on the binding energy per nucleon which is a topic in the nuclear physics section of aqa level physics thank you very much for watching and as always have a lovely day